Okay, so we've been reading through uh, Course in Miracles, the daily lessons. We have completed the uh, workbook review, the workbook review through lessons uh, 220, and uh, the introduction to part two in the workbook. And now what we will have is both interspersed lessons and daily lessons. This is an interspersed lesson, so it will stand on its own, so you can refer to it separately from the daily lessons. This lesson is, what is forgiveness? Forgiveness recognizes what you thought your brother did to you has not occurred. It does not pardon sins and make them real. It sees there was no sin, and in that view are all your sins forgiven. What is sin except a false idea about God's Son? Forgiveness merely sees its falsity and therefore lets it go. What then is free to take its place is now the will of God. An unforgiving thought is one which makes a judgment that it will not raise to doubt, although it is not true. I'm going to read that sentence again. It's a little difficult. An unforgiving thought is one which makes a judgment that it will not raise to doubt, although it is not true. The mind is closed and will not be released. The thought protects projection, tightening its chains so that distortions are more veiled and more obscure, less easily accessible to doubt and further kept from reason. What can come between a fixed projection and the aim that it has chosen as its wanted goal? An unforgiving thought does many things. In frantic action, it pursues its goal, twisting and overturning what it sees as interfering with its chosen path. Distortion is its purpose and the means by which it would accomplish it as well. It sets about its furious attempts to smash reality without concern for anything that would appear to pose a contradiction to its point of view. Forgiveness, on the other hand, is still and quietly does nothing. It offends no aspect of reality nor seeks to twist it to appearances it likes. It merely looks and waits and judges not. He who would not forgive must judge, for he who must justify his failure to forgive. But he who would forgive himself must learn to welcome truth exactly as it is. Do nothing then and let forgiveness show you what to do through him who is your guide, your savior and protector, strong in hope and certain of your ultimate success. He has forgiven you already, for such is his function, given him by God. Now must you share his function and give whom he has saved, whose sinlessness he sees and whom he honors as the Son of God. So that's an interesting uh, uh, way to describe. Uh, forgiveness. Uh, recognizes that you thought your brother, what you thought your brother did to you has not occurred. It does not pardon sins and make them real. It sees there was no sin. And in that view, all your sins are forgiven. What is sin except a false idea about God's Son? Forgiveness merely sees its falsity and therefore lets it go. That then, what then is free to take its place, is now the will of God. So, um, what we're saying here is, is that because each of us is an individuated aspect of forgiveness, of, of divinity. Forgiveness is not something we really need, uh, or it's, it's really something that is uh, second nature, maybe is a better way to put it. 
forgiveness should be second nature to us because we are all aspects of divinity. So there should be enough love in our hearts automatically to forgive each other. That's my take on it anyway. I hope it's helpful. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. If there's anything you need me for, you can reach me at 907-351-3003. Text me or call. Also, you can message me through uh, YouTube or Facebook or SoundCloud or on my website, lindalamp.com. And uh, tomorrow, uh, the lesson will begin now with a new lesson, Workbook Lesson 221. And these uh, look to be much shorter in lessons, uh, or in length, rather, and uh, more, more um, focused. So I'm looking forward to that. And um, in the meantime, namaste and much love.